What's up guys? This is the 2020 Toyota RAV4. And before I begin, let me just say that I do, I did not like the RAV4. Never have. Always look like a car that a lady with a couple of cats would drive. Especially the last body style looked like a little minivan to me. Um, I never liked it. And my dislike for the vehicle was furthered when Kanye West said, and I was like, yeah, that's right. I worked my ass off so I don't have to drive a RAV4. And then in 2018, Toyota announced the 2019 model. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. That thing looks good. And since then, I have been secretly in love with the looks of this vehicle, but I didn't tell anybody because liking a RAV4 is not the cool thing to do. Until now, I've finally gotten a chance to drive the car. And let me just say, I'm sorry, old ladies with cats, and I'm sorry, Kanye West, but this car is so good. It's so good. So another thing I think Toyota did a fantastic job on is deciding not to put three rows in this vehicle. So many brands are putting third rows in their models that do not need them, that can't, they're not even useful. I know people say, oh, that's for pets or that's for my kids. But having that third row, all it does is cut out your, your cargo space and you end up having to fold down those third, that third row and never using it again. I moved one of my Airbnb units in this vehicle. It worked perfectly. Um, I was surprised actually at how much. The opening is very square. The, uh, um, the lift is not very high, so you'll have no problem. The seats pr fold pretty flat as well. I was actually just in a Corolla, and um, I will say that this screen in a Corolla, I don't think it works because the Corolla is like very small, and this screen is actually quite big. The screen itself is not very big, but you've got the um, buttons here, and then you've got the bezel on the outside of it as well. So it, it really takes up a lot of the dashboard. It's kind of a bit overwhelming when you put it in a small um, vehicle like the Corolla. But in here, it's perfect. Another thing with the Corolla is that it's such a small vehicle when you're sitting down, you have to reach up because this doesn't move at all. I don't know why I pressed. This doesn't move at all. But in this vehicle, because you're set up high, it's a very easy reach. And you know, it is touchscreen, it's very responsive and you've got the hard buttons on the side, which are pretty much everything that you need. It does have Apple CarPlay as well. There's a USB here in the center, and then there are two more USBs in the center console. So let's talk safety. I just posted a review on the Mercedes A-Class, and I was talking about how it was nice that they added a lot of feature standard in the vehicle um, because the higher end vehicles usually don't do that. The higher end brands usually don't do that. Um, however, those things are usually standard on, you know, you know, less expensive vehicles like Toyota. And this vehicle is a prime example of that. See what I did there? Prime, RAV4, prime. Anyways, <laughs> cross traffic monitoring, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, and radar based adaptive drift control are all standard on this vehicle. Does it matter if you're going on the most expensive RAV4 or the least expensive RAV4? And then your traditional safety equipment too ABS, traction control, tons of airbags, all those things come standard. And I think in that itself is such a value for this vehicle. There is an option to upgrade the sound system. Believe it or not, the sound system in this vehicle is really good. It's really, you don't need to upgrade it, it's fine. You can get an additional safety package um, that pretty much just adds the ultrasonic sensors for parking assist to let you know how close you are to an object. But really, there are no blind spots in this vehicle and you can see in the hood is actually raised. So you can actually see where you are 
very easily. There's no need to spend the extra money for those sensors unless you're just the worst parker in the world. And if that were the case, you probably don't have a driver's license. So. Cross traffic monitoring. So with all this love for the RAV4, what is bad about it? Is there anything bad about it? Of course there is. And it is, engine is that is a 2.5 liter four-cylinder which I wish was turbocharged but it is a CVT engine and it it drives me crazy it's completely adequate 203 horsepower 184 pound-feet of torque completely adequate moving around town and and, and in the city driving completely fine this CVT especially struggles on the highway when you're wanting to pass someone putting it down into sport mode doesn't really help it because you hear that you hear that before the car actually moves before anything happens and there's so much delay between the car trying to find the right gear and, and, and actually moving now when it is up to speed the car drives great on the highway when it's up to speed it's actually pretty smooth and the thing is that this is the only engine that's available in this vehicle. Now you can mate it to a hybrid system, but this 2.5 liter four cylinder is the only one that they offer. So is that a deterrent for anyone getting the vehicle? I don't think so, but it is something that you need to be aware of. So if you're going out to test drive the vehicle, make sure that your test driver lets you go on the highway. So the next thing that's kind of a down part of this vehicle is it's really a personal thing. I'm 6'1", and I find that the seat bottoms are a little too short. So I have this space right here that doesn't really extend out. And the thing is that when you adjust the seat, it actually is adjusting me right here, which is a very odd feeling. People with shorter legs, or they are a bigger person, or maybe you're both, I think you'll find the seats very good. They are not really bolstered too much here, so that makes it easy to slide in and out of the seat. So I wanna show you how the lane keeping works. That button is located right here. And when those two um, line markers or lane markers are lit up solid, that means that it is active and both the camera and the radar can see the lines on the road. Something you should know is that if your hands are off the steering wheel and it corrects you back into the lane, it will beep and it will tell you to get back onto the uh, steering wheel. If you don't do that and it corrects you again, the system is still active. But after the third time, it will beep letting you know that you're going over the lane markings, but it is not active anymore and you're on your own. So you get two times it saves you, the third time it's inactive. So that's something you should know. So, what is my recommendation on this vehicle? Should you lease it? Should you buy it? You know me, I like leasing vehicles, but this one, I'm gonna say, just buy it. This vehicle is an XLE, and it starts around 27,000. It is one step higher than the base model, which is the LE, that starts around 26. But to make it the perfect RAV4, I would upgrade one trim level to the XLE Premium. Now, that will give you the moonroof, which this does not have. It'll give you the bigger wheels. It will also give you um, Toyota's version of like their leather seats. This one has cloth and also has light colored cloth and there's already stains in here. It wasn't me, but there are stains in here. That vehicle starts at uh, around $30,000. Now, Toyota's, especially the RAV4s, they really hold their value. And so what I would suggest that you do is to get a new one and just negotiate the price very well. Just negotiate the price. Because a 2019, which is when this body style came out, a 2019 online is still selling for average around 27,000. So for like $3,000, screw it. Enjoy the new car experience and buying a brand new car because 
you know, that $3,000, it really doesn't matter. So enjoy the car, negotiate your price down. Don't be afraid if that particular salesman is an asshole and he won't give you the deal you want, go to someone else in the dealership. If that dealership doesn't do it, then you go to another dealership. You don't need to be there to get the deal done. You don't need to be there to at that dealership. You can take care of this stuff over the phone. So um, someone's gonna take the deal. But at the end of the day, it's your money. You need to get what you want. It's a great vehicle. I'm so glad that I finally got to drive it. I'm so glad that I can finally share with the world that I love the RAV4 because it really is a great vehicle. And so if you're in the market for one, you can't go wrong. If you have any questions about the vehicle, leave me a comment down below. I'll try to get to you as quick as possible. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.